What is up, everyone? P Don's here, and well, yeah, I'm back with another draft league. So, Great Lakes Draft League, I believe the information got posted in the UGA server, I want to say. I can't exactly remember where I found it, but I did find it, and I do know it was kind of a competitive league in Season 1, so I decided to hop in. Essentially, I, f I figured this would be good practice for me in case I want to jump back into High Roller Season 5, or honestly just to keep myself sharp in uh, Series 9 Dynamax Draft. So with that, I joined. And uh, I'm introducing myself to a bunch of new people I haven't seen before. So here's a little bit about who I am. Uh, I'm not gonna go wet. I'm not gonna go really into it. But the biggest things would be that I do have draft league experience with, uh, with managing a front office for Steph Anime and, and WBE and XDL, Golden State Glaceons. Uh, I helped her a lot and. My two prominent uh, draft leagues were High Roller 2 and, uh, and UGA 3, and I performed well enough in both of them. So yeah, let's move on. The Snowbell Blizzards, what I'm playing under, is not actually a draft league. Like, it wasn't created for draft league, it was created for a team tournament. Uh, I'm... I'm currently the manager there in NPA. It's NPA 11 right now, actually, and we are currently in a battle for the playoffs. So, by 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 the, by the time uh, this league starts, I'll have known if if we're going back to the playoffs or not. But yeah, I I'm I'm taking taking the name since since, since I guess I created the team, and I'm I'm running it within multiple draft leagues now. So. Hey, it's 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 a good way to identify me, I guess. But yeah, the Great Lakes Draft League was divided into four divisions: two Dynamax, two non-Dynamax. I am in the Squirtle division, which is one of the two Dynamax divisions. The other one being Empoleon. Series nine rules: you had. You had seven picks that had to fill specific tiers. One tier one, one tier two, two tier threes, two tier fours, and a tier five. Then you were given 120 picks for the last four picks, I mean 120 points, to do whatever you want with them. And I, you can see the scale there. Tier one is 50 points, tier two is 40 points, all the way down to tier five, which is 10. There were six Pokemon that were considered tier zero which costs 60 points and can only be drafted as a free pick. So you had to spend something to get these. You could not get them for nothing. They will be Dragapult, Metagross, Celesteel, Galarian Moltres, Glastria, and Torn. So I got lucky and got the second pick out of 12. So at this point, I know I'm getting a impact mon. It's something I could definitely build around. And once I secure that, I can then use the wheel come back to me as best as I can to try and build around that piece. And my Alola Division semifinalist team got Dragapult in round one. I was able to successfully build around that to have a very strong team. And I decided going into the draft, I wanted to run it back and maybe get that team a, a championship that I just missed out on. So with that, my, my first pick was Dragapult, except it wasn't. Guess what? Despite it being 60 points, this, 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 despite, despite the tiers saying maybe it's a little harder to build around. Dragapult went first overall. Um, I I do want to compliment Burst for, for drafting it. It's even 
the way it is set up now, I feel it's probably the best Pokemon in in Series 9 Draft League. So, even with all those restrictions, it's a damn good pick, and it's a respectable pick as the number one overall pick. But, this isn't going to be the first time I have problems reassembling my UGA team. If you... You, if you if you look at it on, on on the left, these are the mons I did have, how I drafted them in UGA, and where they went in the two divisions. Dragapult, first overall, what are you going to do? My jaw kind of hit the floor when Tapu Koko went sixth overall. I thought I was going to easily be able to bring that back, but once again, it's a good mon. T T Toxic made a good pick. What, what can I say? Um, and 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 then I did have Weavile Verizian in in uh, UGA, and I probably should have been in the Napoleon division because it went undrafted there. But I didn't get a chance to bring them back in the Squirtle division because they were both picked up by the same player in sequence on close to the wheel. Again, great mons, great team building. So, so yeah, D Dragapult goes, and I have a problem. What am I doing now? Well, I fell back on my second option, Togekiss. Togekiss is a lovely Pokemon in these kinds of formats. You start a Fantasy Core... You obviously have the crit kiss stuff. You obviously have, uh, you know, yawn. Uh, I've I've seen some things with helping hands. I've seen some things with life do. Um, mo more importantly, it's only one of six follow me users in Sword and Shield, and like five of them are scattered within the first two tiers. So there is no way around it if you want to follow me user you have to draft high or you have to draft togepi and the good news is with togekiss i'm not locked into just it being a follow me bot i can also use it as a strong offensive weapon to even get around walls because i can crit them 50 percent of the time anyway and because of its versatility and flexibility, I don't have to commit to a specific draft path immediately. And it makes it one of the best value picks in the draft, even for a tier one. So yeah, Togekiss is great. So I have I have a long wait till the next to my next pick. And I'm mulling over what what, what I want to do. My, my, my initial thought was Double Fairy with Tapu Koko, maybe Proc Policy with the, you know, Volt Switch, and uh, not got slept to death on my old team. But, as I mentioned, that went very quickly. Um, as it came back to me, I once again faced the same decision I faced in UGA. Gothitelle? Or Primarina. I ended up going with Gothitelle because I really wanted to pair it with Dragapult. But this time, I really wanted the Double Fairy. I I went with this offensive Juggernaut Primarina as my as my second pick. Um, this Pokemon tends to do very well on on the kill kill leaderboards for a lot of leagues and there's there's little reason to wonder why it's got a very high special attack and water and fairy stab is it's just, it's just so strong and 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 you've got a good move pool with it too like i, I can i can run things that that bring out Hailstorm. I can run over, Overgrowth with it as well. I do have Aqua Jet if I want a priority, and 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 it's it's got some support moves as well. Like one week maybe I can use Encore. Uh, maybe feeling lucky I could 
sing, something like that. And the, yeah, you've got the 80, 74, 116 bulk. It'll live things physically. It's going to be a special wall while dealing a lot of good special damage. And 60 base speed, you can make it fast enough to outspeed things with Tailwind. And it drops down to 58 total speed at its slowest, which is good enough for Trick Room. And, and you know what? These two fairies even pair together because Follow Me plus Pre-Marina maxing and killing things is a good combo in of itself. And yeah, it, you've got the double fairy. It may have some issues, but the two of these, the two of these fairies together, Togekiss and Pre-Marina, in my opinion, are worth the type double up. So, at and at, at this point, I just have to wait for Burst to make picks. I do want to see what happens on the wheel, and and it's and it's Clefable and Riolu. So I'm um, I'm left with a decision. I feel like this is a little early, but I also have no choice. I brought Gothitelle back. So it's a tier three pick in this league. It's the only returning member of my uh, UGA semifinalist, uh, low division semifinal squad. And the reason we drafted the Shadow Tag. Like, it has a lot of good things, you know, fake out, helping hand, heal pulse. It even has Frisk if you wanted to change its ability one week for whatever reason. But you draft it because of Shadow Tag. It is an incredibly good ability. Um, plus, you know what? You have, you have Mimic you. You have you have Porygon too. They're both very very good Trick Room setters. You can make a case for either of them being better than Gothitelle. But Gothitelle is also the cheapest of the three. And I do feel like Shadow Tag makes it worth the investment. I didn't necessarily want to take Gothitelle 26th overall. I felt I need I could have maybe gotten something a little bit better for for the pick. But I also knew looking at the way some of the teams were developing, looking at some of the people in the division who have experience with me actually I knew there was almost no chance Gothitelle and Gotharita were going to last. And as it turns out, Gotharita was drafted um, the next round, but before it got back to me. And w w one of the other coaches did mention that had I passed on Gothitelle, they were taking it. So, yeah. I grabbed it when I did. I had to have it when I did. I'm glad I got it back. It might be played a little differently than how it was with, with in UGA, where it could really support like Dragapult and Diggersby very well. But I, I have a good Trick Room on for Primarina. I have a, a way to set up the Trick Room with Togekiss. I'm feeling good about the Goth to tell. Uh, one of the targets that I did lose, though, was the Weavile I mentioned earlier. I, I did like that Mon as an, as an offensive weapon, and I actually do have it in, in another smaller league now, and it's really holding its own. So, it was a little disappointing to lose that. So, when, when it got back to me, I had to sit and think on this a little bit. And I actually reached into tier 4 and grab Steelix early. Now, the reason I grabbed Steelix was because I felt the draft as it was was telling me this. I needed a steal to complete the fantasy core. I needed a real trick room mod. Like, Primarina is good. 58 speed is pretty good in Trick Room, but people will draft lower than that. 
So I needed something that was really slow. Um, I I also want a physical defense. I had I had the sp special defense in Primarina. Togekiss and Gothitelle you can make kind of bulky, but I didn't have a real physical def defense mon that I could throw out there as of yet. I also had double weaknesses to poison and steel hitting me pretty hard at this point. So I felt the steel and poison resist also had some merit. And as I was thinking about my draft plan, including stuff like maybe I grab Registeel, maybe I grab Tokenmaru, maybe I grab Cortana even. As I, as I looked at it, I felt like a higher tier steel type was probably going to be unlikely. And if I let this go to burst, holding Dragapult and Clefable, that's a cheap way for burst to complete a fantasy core. So I felt I had I had to take Steelix now. Steelix does have the stats and the typing to utilize body press. Both of its stabs and its, and its coverage moves. Plus, you've, you've got stabs, max quakes, and max steel spikes, so you're dealing a lot of damage with those hits, and you're boosting your own defense. And uh, the more I think about it, because of how offensive my uh, UGA team was, if I had a mon like Steelix I could maybe switch around to, it might have been the defensive piece I was missing, so I'm excited to try it here. Now, Going into round five, only two people were probably going to be looking at tier ones. Myself and Matt. Matt had been doing a reverse draft, like where you're starting with the tier five, going down to tier four, and I wasn't sure which tier one Matt was going to look at, but... I could not take a chance. I could not let this thing go. So, my fifth round pick, I grab Spectrier. Now, Spectrier, this is the first time I was using my points. And if you look at my other four moms, they are all average to low speed. I needed a fast Pokemon. And I felt that Spectrier was the only remaining game-changing fast Pokemon that you could also use with few drawbacks. Like, for example, Ninjask is very fast. Ninjask isn't doing anything. Hermosa is very fast. If you blow on it, it falls over. Jolteon is very fast, but it's not hitting as hard as it should and it doesn't have the best move pool to exploit that special attack. Spectrier, on the other hand, I felt had had has the move pool, despite how kind of shallow it is, to exploit its stats. It does have natural offensive synergy with both Togekiss and Gothitelle. Like, you can't hit Spectrier, nor can you run from it in that case. And... You know, you get like fake out, helping hand support. So, so, so yeah, that, that, th those two pair well with it. If I want to run it supportively, I can. It's it's got scary face, coming off 130 base speed, so you can slow down a lot of things. Will wisp, bulldoze, snarl. It's pretty good. Uh, if I'm able to get a KO with any uh with on on any mount spectrier. I do get the Grim Nay boost, and that has the potential to start snowballing the game. I do wish maybe I waited a little longer, because I actually did lose something by taking Spectrier now. But at the same time, had Matt grabbed it instead, I probably would have had a problem, I think. So, I do regret taking it here, but I also don't. 
Now, the mod I ended up losing was actually Manetric. I did a lot of uh, mocking in, in, in my head, and I was inadvertently always inserting Manetric in as the Lightning Rod Pokemon because of the 105 base speed, the electric typing, and and yeah, being able to protect Togekiss and Primarina. That that ended up getting taken in round six, but before it got back to me. So I wasn't sure where I was going. I ended up having to think a lot because I felt I needed a lightning rod Pokemon. Like there's there were there's a Regilecki team that I'm thinking of as I'm trying to make this pick. And it's something that's even gonna outspeed even Spectre, or Transistor, Gothitel even. It's gonna it's gonna be very hard for Togekiss and Primarina to deal with, because obviously they're weak to it. And I was considering Pikachu at first because it was faster. But then again, you have the same problem. Reggie Lucky just max strikes it and goes goes about its business. Then the answer hit me. I noticed what else was in tier four, and I grabbed it. Right on. Now for Ride On To be blunt. I need my opponents to aim for the horn. Not my Togekiss and not my Primarina. It's the best value available for Lightning Rod. And then, and another thing you can do too is there are there are some Pokemon that might throw out a Thunder Wave to slow down Spectria. Rhydon can absorb that too. You it, it has great offensive stats. It, it has one of those Gen 1 move pools where they gave they gave these kinds of Pokemon everything. So with with the physical attacks that it has, it's also a viable offensive option. It it it, it has a has over 100 base HP and I think 115 defense. I, I I don't I don't remember the exact exact defense. It's very good though. Um. The 45 special defense isn't that great, but worst case, I can kind of treat it like a Cartana, max out the special defense, I can boost it with an assault vest or an Eviolite, and and yeah, it, it'll it'll be okay. And it does have similar moves to Steelix, but it does enough things differently that, like offensively, I could justify both of them on on the same team that, that 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 was also one of the things that was holding me back a little bit on selecting ride on but yeah it, it, it's it, it's okay and the, and, and and i think it fills a pretty important need for this team all right so with that we've got got six pretty good pokemon Let's start supporting them a little more. And with that, I grab Sneasel next. Yes, I lost Weavile, but Sneasel will have to do. It's a tier 3 pick. It's not as fast or as strong as Weavile, but it does get in a focus. So, any of the support things that I want to run with Sneasel, you know, like Big Tears, Icy Wind, Taunt, uh, anything that procs a weakness policy, Fake Out, of course. I'm not getting flinched. I am getting that off unless you lead, like, Weezing plus Fake Out for whatever reason. Um, you also have a base 95 attack, and it's not as strong as Weavile. But 95 is strong enough coming off of those stabs. So, exclusively running it as, as a support mon, that can be done. But it can go on the offensive if need be. And hey, 
Togekiss really appreciates the weakness policy, Brock. I mean, I, I can max this thing, hit it with an unfake outable ice shard, and uh, start going to town with uh, Togekiss. So, yeah. <laughs> Sneasel's pretty, pretty good here, I think. Alright, so I, I have to wait a bit. I, looking at the way teams are developing, I really want a fire type. Essentially, I was willing to play a bit with the with the point values. Could have maybe grabbed Turtonator if, if if necessary. I was even considering Charizard if you'd believe it. Like I felt I really needed a fire type. So when this got back to me, I was absolutely thrilled. Flareon. Flareon's a tier 5 pick. I felt I was getting tier 4 value in tier 5. So, I get an evolution in tier 5 with 130 base attack, and it's got Flare Blitz. It, it doesn't have many other attacks that it can do stuff with, but it's good enough. Like, I, I, I can always, like, max and, like, give it Giga Impact or superpower or something and that that that'll work for it. It it's it's it still has flare blitz. It's still gonna have a really strong max flare. So yeah. Flare Flareon's gonna hit hard. Base 65 speed allows Tailwind or Trick Room usage, which is going to be important. But because it's an evolution, it also has a decent support move pool. Uh, you got Yawn and Charm from Eevee, but being a fire type, it also gets Will O Wisp. I can I can go Flash Fire or Guts as needed. If I'm really expecting fire attacks, I've got a fire immunity I can swap into. Or maybe I give it a toxic orb one week and go nuts with guts. And yeah, when 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 I looked at the at the tier list Flareon stood out to me as a Pokemon that I felt probably should have been in Tier 4. So, putting it in Tier 5 was fantastic for me. And it gave me the flexibility to execute what I thought was the rest of my draft plan. Now, I just needed the Mons to get to me. And on, on, on the wheel... I took a Mon that I feel has a potential to glue this team together. And that's Gallade. I'm using the Mega Gallade here for the picture because being able to get this Mon felt like I was grabbing a superhero for this team. Like, it's something I identified, I think, as early as round six or seven. That I was probably going to need to pick up in order to field the kind of team that I was looking to do. So, it might be regular Gallade, but it feels like a superhero to me, so it gets the Mega Sprite. It was a tier 4 pick, 20, 20 point cost, so I had 50 left. The move pool is massive. You can use 14 physical max move types, and most of them at full power. Like, I, I, I think there's one or two where it, like, maxes out at about 100, 110. But almost every other max move is maxing out at, like, 130 or 140. Which which is definitely what you want from, from like, all, all these kinds of max moves. Gardevoir has always had a strong support move pool. Well, because Gallade is... From the Ralts line, it also takes much of Gardevoir's support move pool and adds quick and wide guard to it. So, yeah, it, it can do support things too. The intent wasn't to draft a second Trick Room Pokemon, but I did get one with Gallade. Like Got to Tell, I can also imprison Trick Room with Gallade if I so choose. So, it's, it's a nice touch. If, if, if you look at the way the team is developing at the moment, 
Gatogekiss, Sneasel, and Flareon weak to rock. I have I have Steelix and Rhydon resist to rock. It's good to get Gallade in here because it's another rock resist. And you know what? With how flexible this thing is, I don't have to run it the same way every week. So opponents have to account for a lot that Gallade can do in prep. And with that, I've I've got two picks left. I want an electric mon, preferably, and I want a tailwind mon. So for the electric mon, after assessing all my options, I went with a fridge. And this fridge ended up causing the draft so many problems. Why? Because the fridge was banned. In 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 our uh, in our documents that were that were posted pre-draft, Rotom Frost was a tier four Pokemon. So 20, 20 points. I ended up having thirty left after the pick. But on Draft League NL. Rotom Frost was tiered with stuff like Zacian and Cali Shadow. It was inadvertently banned. So, so, so yeah, we, we kind of had to wait to get that straightened out before I could pick, pick this fridge up. But when I did, it fulfilled the electric type that I needed. And being able to use Blizzard and Max Hailstorm is also potentially helpful to this team. Especially as I look around the league and see the kinds of teams developing. Being able to use electric and ice stab moves for uh, for a mon like, like Rotom, it's good. It, it also gets the uh, Rotom stats, obviously, move pool, and the bulk. So, it's a nice type. It's, it's, it's not going to take the same things uh, Rotom Heat or Rotom Wash take, just on the basis of its type. But it's still bulky. It still could sit there and like Will-O-Wisp things, Thunder Wave things, and, and do some damage while it's doing it. Like, th this, this is still good value in Tier 4. And at this point, I do have three ground weaknesses in Flareon, Rhydon, and uh, Steelix. I do have an immunity in Togekiss, but getting a second one here with Levitate doesn't hurt. So I'm, I'm glad to pick that up. Uh, and for my last pick, Tailwind. That's what I wanted. That's what I got. Aerodactyl. It was a tier 3 pick, so I used my last 30 points to pick it up. I felt this team absolutely needed a fast Tailwind mod. If not a Prankster Tailwind, at least a fast Tailwind. And Aerodactyl with a base 130 speed gives me that. I also get other support options with it. Taunt, Whirlwind, Wide Guard, stuff like that. But you know what? This thing's also strong enough to be an offensive weapon in Draft League. It's got 105 attack and 130 speed. And it has a pretty good offensive move pool. Like, it gets a bunch of fangs. I think it gets Iron Head, Rock Slide. Obviously, Max Airstream. Uh, pretty sure something gives it Max Quake. I think Earthquake. So yeah, it, it, it can definitely hit things. And you, you've, you've got a nerve. Like there, there are many Mons that I could see running type resistant berries to deal with some of the offensive pressure I, I might put in. If I throw Aerodactyl out there the type resistant berry shut off. And there are, there are a lot of ways to EV your mons where you take an extra hit because your citrus proc or your wiki berry proc or something like that. A nerf shuts that off too and potentially puts damage counts in flux, which is good for me. And you know what? Sneasel's already helping Togekiss, but Sneasel can do it to Air Doctor too. You can you nice shard the thing and get the weakness policy. How nice is Sneasel? Alright, so these are the eleven and this is kind of the type chart I was I was able to put together. 
for some reason it does not recognize Rotom as a ground immunity. It's just going based off the typings instead of the fact that it has Levitate as well. So outside of Rotom being immune to ground, this is accurate. I do have a few noticeable type weaknesses. And they they are there are they are something that have to be dealt with. But they could also be leveraged, I think. Some of the team strengths that I feel I got out of these eleven. You have a defined fast mode and a defined slow mode to the team. Obviously you got Aerodactyl and Spectrier ready to outspeed a lot of things. Sneasel at 115 is good as well. Yeah. On the other side, you have Steelix and Rhydon, very slow. And I feel Primarina is slow enough to be considered a Trick Room But it, it, and along with Flareon and Galley to a certain extent, and, and Rotom even, they can work with both Tailwind and Trick Room. So I feel the speeds are pretty balanced here. I've got a good mix of support options and offensive pieces on the team. I also have a few a few Pokemon that can, I think can do both. Meaning, whoever I'm playing each week has to account for different modes of play, and if they don't, they could find themselves at a, at a massive disadvantage. Like, like for example, uh, Togekiss, uh, you're gonna get a Yawn Bot with Helping Hand? You're gonna get Crit Kiss? Am I gonna proc Weakness Policy? What's gonna happen? And I feel like there are a few, few mons on this team that can do something like that. Now, looking at these 11, the team definitely leans offensive. But I feel like it's more balanced than the team I drafted in UGA. Like, in UGA, I was basically looking up ways to quickly kill everything in sight. And... I, obviously, doing that is always a good thing, but the mons I have here, if I need to slow the game down, I feel like I can do that better here than I did with the 11 that I drafted in UGA. And yeah, there's a different, there's additional synergy I'm not going to talk about here. Uh, I'll, I'll just mention weakness policies, but. You can probably infer some of these from looking at the Pokemon. I also imagine when power rankings come out, whether it be official or unofficial, I imagine whoever is doing them might pick up on some of these, because because honestly some of them are kind of obvious, even though I'm not going to actually mention them, and and they'll they'll they'll, they'll, they'll probably be mentioned there, but but yeah. I, I feel like these 11 Mons have the potential to work very well together. But they are definitely team weaknesses. I do have incomplete cores. I've, I've got two-thirds of a Fantasy core. I've got two-thirds of a Firewater Grass core. I did not draft a Dragon. I did not draft a Grass type. And I do not have the room to add Flapple. But... I do feel it's better to draft Pokemon that fit the overall team rather than force a core onto the team. Whether or not I did that is is up for debate. I, I could see it going either way, to be honest. I also think that the shared weaknesses, like there are a lot of rock weaknesses on this team. There are a decent amount of water weaknesses on this team. I do think, though, that they can be mitigated and in some cases are necessary either. But they exist, so I'm just going to have to play carefully and, and deal with them to the best of my ability. I also feel like there's a higher chance that I, I get cheesed in, in this league than in UGA. And by which I mean, the way I played UGA was pretty fast, pretty offensive, and... As a result, there wasn't that much of a chance for moves to miss, for me to have an untimely crit, or anything like that. 
there was only one instance in UGA that I remembered that could have caused me a lot of problems because of hacks, but I ended up winning the game anyway, which was an electro web miss. But here, I've got no electric terrain to stop sleep spam. I don't, I don't have psychic terrain. I've got only one dark type that that could potentially be immune to prankster. So I'll have to deal with that stuff. I do have a bulker and slow, bulkier and slower team in comparison to my UGA team. So as I mentioned, talking about the crits, that could happen. But hey, my read directions better at least, and that'll help to mitigate a lot of the. Uh, a lot of this if I use it right and I and I think one of the biggest takeaways I notice is that it's harder for me to win matches in the 11 v 11 week preview but not necessarily impossible like there were times where I could identify like Dragapult proc and Diggersby's weakness policy and then just go in town and Probably winning the game from there in UGA. I don't think I can do that as much or as well with this team. But at the same time, I do have a lot of versatility and I can I can do a lot of stuff with this team, I think. So we'll see how it goes. My overall assessment of the team, I got Tailwind, I got Trick Room, I got Pokemon Variant Speed Tears. I'm happy with that. I got a mix of offensive and defensive mons, and a bunch of support mons that can work with them. Happy about that too. I do see more holes on this team though. Like I mentioned the weaknesses, the shared weaknesses, but I do think it's workable. And the first six mons, it looked like it was going to be a challenge to get these team get this team synergized and kinda together. But I do feel the back half of the draft helped to bring this team together. At the same time, I also think transactions are probably inevitable. Like, I'm going to play this season, I'm going to see some things, and I'm probably going to feel I need to make a move or two. And when that time comes, I, <laughs> I hope my answers are on the waiver wire, but that there's, there's a good chance I'll be able to find something. And looking around the league, I do see some matchups where I'd probably not necessarily be favored, but I don't think I have an auto loss as of now, which which can be important. Like, absolute worst case, if that's the assessment, you've got a chance to win every week by playing well. And at the end of the day, that's all you could ask for. But I do feel this team is probably middle of the pack in the Squirtle division. And I have a feeling it might be rated right there in power rankings. But I also think this team can get me to the playoffs. So I'm definitely looking forward to trying it and seeing what happens. And if I can make top six, <laughs> that, that'd be great. So th th thank you all for watching. I'm kind of glad to be making these again. It's going to be a 10-week season, so I'm just not playing one coach. It's uh, actually a uh, Toxic who I'm not playing. So I'm probably not going to see the Tapu Koko that got drafted sixth overall this season. Unless, it, unless we both make the playoffs. I'm I'm allowed to do mid-season tra transactions up to week eight, so I do have an I do have a lot of time to assess what's going on, and and evaluate as needed. I do intend to stream my sets on Twitch, but because of my time IRL these days, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do an analysis video every week like I did in UGA. So we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But yeah, I am I am absolutely looking forward to competing. And uh, yeah, th 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 thanks for watching, everyone.